Hello friends, it is June, which at the end of June we're halfway through the year. We're halfway through June, which means I think I'm not too early to do the mid-year freak out tag. <laughs> I think I'm always one of the people who does this too early, but I just get so excited. I love this tag. It always makes me feel very much like it gives me a moment to think about the year so far, and I just can't wait to do it. Yes, I could do it in two weeks when we're technically slap on halfway through the year, but like, I don't want to. <laughs> I've got other videos I want to do then. So today we're going to be doing a mid-year freak out tag. If you've never heard of this, I'm sure you have, but if like you're new to booktube or whatever, this is a tag that kind of makes us reflect on the year so far and how our reading has gone and whether we're happy with how our reading has gone, our best and worst of the year. So shall we just get into it? First question is, best book you've read so far in 2024 holy shit okay let's have a look at my reading spreadsheet i think i know what it is but i want to make sure i'm not forgetting anything my fave book that i've read so far this year is pride and prejudice by jane austen none of you fuckers watch the video <laughs> I'll leave a video where I read this like down below, but um, I did a video where I read Pride and Prejudice and the Red Retelling. I'm gonna do a few more this year just to make sure that I read some classics. And Pride and Prejudice, <laughs> Janie, Janie, Janie. She's incredible. She's a beautiful person. Her talent and brilliance is beyond. I just love Jane Austen and everything she does. Now, I always struggle to talk about this because like I've told you many, many times, I grew up watching the BBC adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. And so it's plot, it's everything is so deeply rooted in my psyche that I just can't, I can't imagine a world in which people don't know the plot of this. So I'm very, I don't know what to tell you. So we've got Lizzie Bennet, who um, has five, there's five of them, five sisters, her and, yeah, her and her four sisters, need to get married because essentially the way that it works at the time, that because there's no sisters, none of them are holding onto their father's estate when he dies as like a cousin um, who's going to inherit it all. So they all need to get married and the mother's obsessed with getting them married off. And Mr. Darcy comes to town <laughs> and he um, is with his friend who's bought a house in the area and they kind of meet at some of the balls going on. I think that's that's what you really need to know, it's a romance. And there was just so much about this book. I, I, I loved the experience of reading this book because there's so many details of it that you notice that you don't, I mean, I love the BBC adaptation because it's six hours long. I refuse to watch the movie because how are you gonna, how are you gonna do it in an hour and a half? How are you gonna do it in an hour and a half? And also, it just looks so serious. And it, I don't wanna see any comments telling me to watch the movie. You all, I don't know if I talk about this, there's like 20 people who are like, oh, you should really watch the movie. I don't want it. I just, Colin Firth is my Mr. Darcy forever, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do it, my heart is saying no. But it just looks so serious, like Jane Austen's funny, she's funny and I love the humour anyway. But it's so interesting, obviously I love the story, I love Jane Austen's writing, but it's interesting seeing a side to Lizzie that you don't really see in the book because the, it's called Pride and Prejudice, I'll leave that up to your own. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but it's Pride and Prejudice. And I think you see more of Lizzie's flaws in the book and more of her father's flaws, whereas they're both kind of painted in the in the TV show as like without flaw. You see why it is like in the in the in the TV show, you kind of blame the mum for the way she's acting in society and embarrassing the family. But like the dad at the end of the day has put them in the situation they're in. And Lizzie, you're kind of from her perspective in the show, but then in this you see the, how the way she acts does have negative consequences. So I just think it's fascinating. I love them. I love Mr. Darcy. <laughs> I love the story. I loved seeing it unfurl. It was just such an incredible, nostalgic, amazing experience. So I've spoken about that for far too long, but I love Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Question number two. Oh, it's best sequel you've read so far in 2024. I think I'm going to have to go with Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Bowdry. This is the, oh, technically this is a prequel, but who cares? This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. And I didn't love it as much as Legends but that's like quite a high bar. But I really, 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 really adored this. We're following Viv who, she's on her like, I don't know what the word, right word is. She's a mercenary and she gets injured in a battle and so she has to hole up in this kind of little seaside town to recover before her, her like troop come back and collect her on the way back. And she discovers this bookshop there and starts helping out there and starts getting to know people in the area. And I just think Travis Bowdry is gonna go on. I'm so excited to live in the era where Travis Bowdry 
is writing but has just started writing and we live with the promise of what's to come. Like I just think he could go on to be such an incredible author with such an amazing oeuvre. I'm so excited to see what he does in the future because his books are all, have all just got this X factor to them that I don't I don't see in a lot of books. You are right up May Street. The way he writes, the way he treats characters, the way the books make you feel. I think there's a lot of people trying to do it. There's a lot of try people trying to compare. And they can't, they can't. There's a lot of people trying to do what he's doing. And I just, this whole genre of cozy fantasy always feels like a cheap imitation to me at the moment of Travis Boudry. Like other than Brandon Sanderson with Trust the Emerald Sea, I, there's, there's not a lot I've read. I love the idea of cozy fantasy, but there's not a lot I've read where I'm like, oh yeah, that really does it as well as Travis Boudry does. So I cannot recommend this enough. If you're nervous like I was, I was so nervous going into this about how it would compare to Legends and Lattes. Some people have preferred it to Legends and Lattes. I did not, but I still think it is incredible. So this is probably my favorite sequel I've read so far this year. Question number three, new release you haven't read yet, but want to. Oh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> How does one choose one? Okay, there's a few. Let's mention a few. Misled and Parts of Don't Bush on Maguire is the next in the Wayward Children series. I just frankly think it's embarrassing I haven't read this yet when it's so short. I just love the Wayward Children series, so that's one. And then two murder mystery or mysteries, one YA, is the reappearance of Rachel Price. I'm actually going to be reading this in a couple of weeks, guys. Maybe not in, in a month. I'm not sure actually when I've scheduled the video. I, I am nervous for this because we all know how I found Fires of Five, but this feels like more... Holly Jackson going back to her roots of Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So I definitely need to read this. And I am so excited to read The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. It just sounds so unique. I think this is one of the best premises I have ever heard. I, I've, I've given the spiel a hundred times, but let's give it again. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. So there's a fog that destroyed the world and there's this island that's protected from the fog where there's like a hundred and something, 120 villagers and some scientists. One of the scientists is brutally stabbed to death. They learn the murder has triggered a lowering of the ultra, ultra intelligence security system around the island, the only thing that keeps the fog at bay. If the murder isn't solved within 107 hours, the fog will smother the island and everyone on it. But the security system has also wiped everyone's memories of exactly what happened the night before, which means someone on the island is a murderer, they don't even know it. <gasps> oh, I just... Tell me to me, please. <laughs> Send it to me, Rachel. I'm so scared. I, I, I'm, like, terrified of reading it. I'm so scared about reading it. But I'm so excited. I have seen a couple people read it and give it, like, a strong four. I just think maybe I get a Stuart Tatton. I just love what he does. I just love the uniqueness of his books. I just think he's incredible. So those are probably the three. I mean, we could go on forever. There's a lot of them that I want to get to. But um, those are probably the three that have come out that I most want to get to because they're authors that I've read and loved before. Next answer, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I think it's an easy one. Say it with me. We Solve Murders by Richard Osman. <laughs> I just love this man. I love him. I listen to his podcast every week now. Like, I just, I'm so, I'm so Richard Osman fan coded. Like, <laughs> I love him. And I'm so excited to see the start of a new series and what he does with it. I think it's going to be so fascinating. I'm so excited. So this one, it's kind of like a vague synopsis. All we really know is we're following a father-in-law and daughter-in-law duo who solve matters together. And I think it's a lot more jet setting, like... I feel like James Bondy vibes, like from the cover, than Thursday Murder Club. Oh God, I just love living in this world with Richard Osman's book. I'm so excited. My other, what's my other? Have I got any other ones that are like so, I cannot wait for the second half of the year? I feel like I do. I've definitely got less releases in the second half of the year I'm looking forward to. I'm gonna do my video soon of all the releases I'm looking forward to. Anything else that compares to We Solve Murders? Um, no, if I'm honest with you, no. <laughs> Oh, maybe I guess I should say The Examiner by Janice Halleck comes out in August, but I own it already and very likely got sent an arc of it. Yeah, I think this one is going to be one of Janice Halleck's best. It's following, there was a multimedia art course with six students on it. Um, and when the examiner, when the examiner goes to kind of in mark the students, he thinks there was a murder. He thinks the student was killed in the course and the others covered it up. So again, classic Janice Halleck fashion. We've got emails, we've got uh, text message exchanges, we've got like leaflets of stuff so yeah I need to read this one soon I think it's gonna be a really good Janice Hallett edition next question is biggest disappointment oh what is my biggest disappointment let me go look on Goodreads where I can see it has to be something that like biggest disappointment isn't the worst book I've read right it's like 
what disappointed me the most. I'd probably have to say Uprooted. This was a fantasy that had been so highly pitched for me. A lot of people compare this to Catherine Arden and the Brandon Nightingale series because it's kind of like old Russia or like old Eastern European fantasy inspired. And I just thought this was really bad. <laughs> it was really bad. I gave it one star. I really hated it. I don't think I'm going to pick up any Naomi Novik in the future. I don't, I don't think it's for me. Because, yeah, there was just something about this that I thought was just incredibly boring. I thought all of the characters were very underdeveloped. Like, so underdeveloped. And I thought the book left you with more questions than answered. It was so disappointing. Yeah, this is definitely my most disappointing. Like, it was just a drag, girl. It was a drag. I... <sighs> I can't believe what it is. We're <laughs> through, to be honest. It was really, really bad. It was really bad. And I don't get it. I have heard a lot of people love Spinning Silver, though. If you, like, if someone pitched it to me, I could be tempted. But I just don't know if I've ever been so bored reading a book. And I was scared it was just me, but a lot of you turned out to agree with me. Next is Biggest Surprise. Oh, interesting. Hang on. I just want to think about what is the biggest surprise. Okay, I think my answer for Biggest Surprise and favourite new author, debut or new to you are the same. And my answer for both of those is going to be Shark Heart by Emily Hebeck. I was shook by how much I enjoyed this. I'd heard mixed things, but I absolutely... <gasps> this is really up there for me. This is probably my second or third. It's definitely the top five books I've read so far this year. So we're following a young couple who are early on in their marriage and the husband gets a diagnosis that he's slowly turning into a great white shark. And their story is only really the first half and then we follow some other stories throughout the second half of the book that I don't want to spoil. But this book is so special. <laughs> <laughs> this book is so special. I absolutely loved it. The way that it's written is we've got a lot of like short paragraphs or like some pages are longer, but we also have some shorter paragraphs. And I just love the cadence, the way this is written. I'm so interested in reading more from Emily Herbeck in the future. I think this was a debut. And I just think it was A, so original, the way that it, it, it portrays what it's portraying. But I just think what this book was saying was so beautiful. I think it's such a beautiful book. I really would recommend it to everyone. I think it's so gentle, but impactful. It has this gentleness, this lightness to it, but also this impact to it. I absolutely, oh, I just think it's like, you know when you read a book and you're like, that is really so so special, so unique. I don't think it's gonna be for everyone. I can understand why some people haven't enjoyed it. It's slow. I think the writing style is quite distinctive and I think you're either gonna really enjoy the writing style or really not enjoy the writing style. I don't think there's really an in-between, but it really, it hit, it hit me. I, I loved it. I loved it. I'm so excited to see what Emily Hebeck publishes in the future. I loved this kind of weird magical realism. -y. I think I, I really enjoy magical realism, but I think when authors write magical realism-y stuff, it's often quite like, you either get it in horror or like it's it's often quite intense, I feel like. And there's just something about the gentleness. It reminds me, yes, it's a great shock, but it reminds me of like the sound of the sea when you're on a beach. Like the way this book kind of flows and feels, I think is very, very unique. So that is my answer for both of those questions. Next, oh, I hate this question. Cut the cameras. Dead ass. Next is newest fictional crush. I don't really crush. I don't really crush. I don't really crush. I did read three Ali Hazelwoods <laughs> so far this year, all of which I gave, oh no, Bride I gave four stars, the other two I gave five stars. Probably my favourite, like, relationship I've read so far this year is Love Theoretically. Like, I did like the vibes with this one. She is like a fake, oh, I forgot this is even an element. So she's like a dating for hire, like fake dates. Like, so, so if you want someone to you're meeting up with your family and you want to say oh i've got a girlfriend she'll come and be your girlfriend and she meets she's dating this guy a fake dating this guy and she meets his brother and then it turns out her brother his brother is the head of um like science at this place that she's in for science <laughs> head of a department at um, this place that she's interviewing and um he's also the guy that wrote an article that tarnished her side of what is it physicist biology yeah physicist <laughs> Which science is it? I won at secondary school best in all three sciences in three different years at school. Can I? I think they made a mistake. I think they made a mistake. It's whack a doodle time. It is whack a doodle time. Like out of my whole year. God, that's crazy. What a different person I was. Anyways, I really, I don't get fictional crushes, but I did find this hot. But everything Ali Hazel is hot. Bride was hot. Bride was interesting <laughs> but 
but this is like classic and it is what I loved it. I loved it. Newest favourite character. <laughs> I don't really feel this way about characters, guys. I'm not a character girl. I don't have an answer for that. There's like, I mean, Lizzie Bennet, Mr. Darcy, like they're all my favourite characters. I feel like my favourite books are my favourite characters. I don't think I have a solid answer. Book that made you cry. Probably Shark Heart, I think, is the book that's made me cry the most so far this year. It really made me cry. I don't know if there's anything else. I haven't. Some of my patrons track if they've cried at a book. Maybe I should start tracking that. That would be something interesting to track. Maybe next year. Remind me, please. But yeah, I think Shark Heart is what made me cry the most. Multiple times I cried throughout this. It was beautiful. Next question is book that made you happy. Do books make me happy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I want to say. Where is it? This is a recent read, but Reach for the Stars by Mocha Craig made me very happy. I loved it. This is nonfiction about the bands and the pop industry from 1996 to 2006. So starting with the Spice Girls. Oh, my whole non-fiction shelf just fell over <laughs> and this just made me so happy like hearing obviously these people they worked very hard and it was a horrible industry Simon Cowell's not a nice man etc <laughs> etc et but the nostalgia of this made me very happy I found a playlist someone made of all the songs that are referenced in this book and you best believe I'm listening to it all the time like oh my god God, I'm like, basically also, I, every other day I do a dance workout from the fitness marshal. I'm now one of his like mem channel members. So I get the 60 minute sweat sessions. If no one knows what I'm talking about, don't worry. But I, I need to get in contact with him because I need to tell him he needs to do old, the like these pop songs. He just needs to do it. Like I need a don't, don't start, start moving to the fucking funky beat. Don't start moving to the funky funky beat. Yeah, come on. I just <laughs> We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. There was just a wealth of possibility with these songs. So um, this made me very happy. The nostalgia of it. Hearing from behind the scenes of this, I thought was absolutely fascinating. I just need to dance to these songs. Maybe I could find it. I wonder if there's like a dance workout for like S Club 7. We would like to see it. Anyways, I just, yeah, I had a whale of a time. And I love a book. I had the same thing with Forgotten Women, the artist, where for every artist was mentioned, I was looking up their art. I kept listening to the songs that are referenced in this. I love something, a book that makes us appreciate media. That's been a big trend for me this year with those two books. Big trend, two books. But I think it's so interesting, a book, a non-fiction book that makes you appreciate other forms of media and it becomes like a multimedia reading experience. Oh, I loved it. Most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. I have actually, I've been tracking how many books I've bought. What is the most beautiful book I've bought this year? Probably a tie between I do love this edition of The Last Murder in Rod. I love the sprayed edges. I think the way that the sprayed edges like continue, I don't know if this has got anything underneath. No, it's just the yellow cover. But um, yeah, the, spray, the way the sprayed edges continue the book, I love. And then I do really love my edition of The Warm Hands of Ghost by Catherine Arden. I really like the cover of it. This is probably my favorite 2024 release, by the way, I haven't mentioned that. But my favorite 2024 release I've read so far this year is this. And on the inside, it's got a quote and stars. And then, oh, I love this part. This is probably my answer, actually. I love, Oh, the way the end papers have been designed. So this is probably the most beautiful book that I've bought this year and my favorite 2024 release. I would definitely recommend it. I feel like not enough people have been reading this and you guys need to get on it because it's a very, it reminds me of Babel in it's like the depth to the book and the strength and the presence of the book. It reminds me of Babel in that way. I don't know how to describe it, but if you just know those books that feel like heavy, they sit heavy, they're like, their impact is heavy. This is one of them. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like actually I do make sense in everything I say and I'm a book genius, you know, but whatever. Excuse me, I'm a genius, look. And then I think we've got one last question. Oh, I hate this question. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that question. Um, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I, I always just say fucking all of them. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? Like, what do you want me to say? Books I need to read by the end of the year. Um, <laughs> I don't know. We'll talk about it later. No, we'll talk about it now. 
all of them. I have a lot of books I need to read by the end of the year. Um, probably a lot of the new releases that I've highlighted and a lot more to come uh, are probably my my priorities. But I, I never have many books I have to read by the end of the year. I would like, this is boring, but I mean, I don't know if anyone cares about this. If I don't make progress in Lady, more progress in the Lady Hardcastle Mystery Series, I've already read one this year, I think. Have I? Yes. What rating did I give it? A 4.5. <laughs> I need to make more progress in the Lady Hardcastle series. I mean, like, come on, who am I? <laughs> that, but like, this is not the book that all of you want to hear me read. Um, but yeah, I my own shelf currently on Goodreads is, how bad is it? <laughs> 245. If I could get that under 200, I'd be so proud of myself. I don't think I will. But if I could get that under 200, I mean, that involves a lot of reading, but... I mean, we've got to try. <laughs> Who are we if we don't try? But I never have an answer to this question. What, me to, what do you want me to say? All of them. I need to read all the books. <laughs> So there we have it, everyone. That is my mid-year freak out tag for 2024. I love reflecting this way and like thinking about the books I really want to read. Let me know your answers to any of these questions, what your biggest disappointment is, what your biggest surprise is, what books you want to make sure you read for <laughs> I hate when I can't speak. What books you want to make sure you read by the end of the year. Please let me know and I'll see you guys very soon in another video. Bye!